Isn't that lovely? The answer is yes. <laughs> I'm so impressed. I didn't ask him to do it that way. <laughs> He just has ideas. We all have ideas. I had an idea Friday. Snowflakes. <laughs> I just, I want snowflakes. I want to get rid of, take all the Christmas stuff down by myself. Thank wow. you. And I, uh, <laughs> okay, had anybody had any intuition, they'd have been here yesterday with me. <laughs> But I just had a thought, snowflakes. Who gets the idea of snowflakes? So I went to Party City, and right there, they were at the front door, snowflakes. So I bought them. And then I thought, glitzy. <laughs> well, home goods takes care of that, really. Uh, <laughs> I was at somebody's house a couple of weeks ago. It looked like home goods exploded. In their house. <laughs> and it was kind of wonderful. Like, we were at Christmas party and I thought, oh my goodness, she looks like she's selling this stuff. But it's, uh, it, I really felt at home <laughs> in her house. You completely match this stuff. You there was a statue and you're part of the difference. I. <laughs> 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 I just I wanted a new look, something that we hadn't done before. I've been here a lot of years. So I went out and I uh <laughs> several trips actually. And, and just cause yeah, how do we have fun up here? How do we have fun? My talk today is called My Wish. I thought, well, and I was surprised at it actually. But I I, uh, I got the idea a few weeks ago in Unity of New York. They can't do a burning bowl. Now next week we're doing our burning bowl uh, for the new year. I wanted to wait until the first Sunday of the new year, and I uh, I uh, but I thought they they do a thing that we're a ritual similar to what we're going to do in a little bit because they're not allowed to use fire. Imagine that the theater doesn't want you to start a fire on their stage. Uh, or they can they can't go out in the street there. So they do this other thing similar to what we're going to do today. But I thought, well, why would we do that besides my whimsy? And I thought, well, because my whimsy. And I thought, but so where's the spiritual grounding in that? And so I thought, my wish. And what is a wish really but an invocation? It is a calling forth that this idea I have, this thing I want to experience is good. I am invoking, calling forth the presence of God in that which I want, because I think it's good. And, uh, and, and so to put it out into the world I see, it's still coming from me. The divine idea is in me. We just sometimes use symbols, we use rituals, we, we use different things to evoke, as it were, the spirit within us. But we call it something. We call it good. We call this thing I want to experience good, whether it's a relationship, whether it's cash, whether it's food, whether it's life and life more abundantly, whether it's our relationship with God. And often that is not first on the list for many people. They want the stuff of the world first. And I'm not here to shame anybody who thinks of God later on down the line. Anybody watched the Saturday Night Live Christmas special last week and saw the Steve Martin sketch? And he is, uh, he's sitting there in a chair by the fire. And he said, this holiday season, I, you know, I, I have a list. If I could have a, one wish. If I could have one wish, it would be that all the children come together and sing. And if I could have two oh. wishes, it would be that all the children come together and sing, and that I could have $30 million delivered to me personally. <laughs> 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 and it goes on. Uh, and finally he says, you know what? The kids, how hard is that going to be to get them together? We're going to put them forth. <laughs> First the 30 million. No, no, do this and then the $30 million. <laughs> and then power. <laughs> and then all my enemies be destroyed. <laughs> and then all the children of the world. <laughs> and so 
I, I'm not going to ask you if your first and top wish or desire in life is really a, your relationship with God. I'm going to tell you to do it. Prioritize. I, I know from personal experience, when I try for anything before God, I'm never quite happy with it. I'm never satisfied with it. Even if I get the thing, I'm never truly satisfied because I never truly know what to do with it. We're not talking about religion here. We're talking about your relationship with your source. That is your deepest desire. And you want to know that your source, I think most of you here call it God, uh, that, that you know your source is in everything that you acquire, everything that you already have. You want to know in every relationship that you have that source comes first. And, and believe me, if we did this, we'd have no enemies. We would have no one that we fear. There would be no absence of good. We would continuously recognize the presence of God active and everywhere present. We would know this. And so let this become our number one priority, our wish, as it were. A dream is a wish your heart makes. And our teachers, uh, for all our antecedents of new thoughts, many in religion have taught us this, and many of new thought, which is not technically a religion, even though it uses the word God, is is the number one priority is your relationship with God. Early on in my healing, they told me they, those people who had gone before me in this modality of healing that I started with many years ago in New York City, and I went into this healing because I had no place else to go, short of dying, short of giving up. I had to do it because uh, it was, those, were, those were the only two choices I saw left was to stay or to go. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna give it a shot here. And I joined a fellowship. And those people told me that uh, you have to find a way to become grateful, Sean, for your life. Even for the stuff you don't like, you have to, to do this because that will spur you on. In fact, later on, uh, you know, as you continue in this fellowship, there is a promise that says you will not regret the past and it even ends with, uh, we will see how God is doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. It promises freedom from fear of financial insecurity. It promises so much. I'm not trying to get you to join a 12-step fellowship. I'm telling you, I did this because I was at such a loss. I had so lost myself that I had to do something radical. A lot of us aren't at that point where we need something radical, so we miss out. We don't fully surrender, we kind of surrender. You know, it's a, what was that, Claiborne Carey, who's a wonderful singer and comedian, and, and I was listening to an album of hers yesterday, and she's doing, stand, she's doing some stand-up in between songs, and she was saying, you know, I, I, uh, I joined a 12-step fellowship. I joined A, because I still wanted to drink a little bit. <laughs> Then I began, they made me the designated driver, so I had to join AAA. <laughs> and, so, and so, to look at things, and I said, oh, uh, what do I want? What do I want? And do I still want some of my misery? So I'm only going to put one foot in the love pool, one foot in the in the God pool, in the source pool? Am I only just gonna put one foot and I'll think about putting the other one in? Or will I listen to the voice of spirit that guides me? That guides me, I have done some insane things in my years of healing because I uh, heard the voice that said, do this. Now, I don't mean insane things like hurt somebody or myself. I mean insane things like apologize where I wasn't sure what I'd done wrong. I, I did insane things like I go up to someone and admit to having been wrong. Imagine, <laughs> imagine admitting that you were wrong. 
And you were. <laughs> Imagine going to someone that you had stolen from when you were 15 and saying, I stole from you when I was 15 and I, I must give this back now. And they say, oh no, no, you don't have to. And he said, yes I do because I no longer want to think of myself as a thief. Imagine owning to lying and betrayal and knowing when not to go to someone and saying, I betrayed you because that would not help. But you go to someone else and tell them, I did this big betrayal and I don't want to keep it a secret any longer because I'm embarrassed or ashamed. Imagine releasing all of your shame. Imagine if you let go of all your guilt and all of your shame in whatever way you're spiritually guided to so that you could be free of shame and guilt. Because here's the best part. God, in new thought, has no need for any of us to be ashamed or guilty. The God of my understanding has no need for me to suffer, has no need for me to have a learning lesson. God is not putting any obstacles in my path to struggle. Now, we do have a divine mind faculty, one of our 12, for, of imagination, and I say imagination is what lights our path so that we may transform obstacles into opportunities. But it doesn't mean that God placed a, an obstacle there, but it does mean that there is a light within me to see it. And say, because if I am stumbling around in the dark and I trip over an obstacle, I'm gonna say, oh, that rotten obstacle. Oh, see, it's out to get me. Stupid obstacle. <laughs> Instead of, sometimes those obstacles are what gets us down this path. But if I spend years trying to lug this big honking obstacle out of here, because I'm gonna go down that path no matter what, because I know on the other side of that obstacle, that that's where my good is. Or have you ever considered just walking around <laughs> and finding out? No, I gotta move that one. Whatever that one is, I usually that's changing someone else. I've got to change this person. So I can, and you know, and, and here's the funny part. <laughs> Get ready to laugh. Uh, <laughs> changing the other person usually means, whether we're conscious of it or unconscious of it, is making them not have done the bad that they did. As soon as I can get them to not have done that, oh, then I'll be free. Well, that's impossible. So now the obstacle is forever, and I'm stuck here trying to move it. I'm trying to uh, use everything I can to move. What if you don't need your parents to have been different in order for you to be free today? What if you don't need your spouse, your former spouse or the one before that, to uh, have been different? What if you don't need anything in your past to have been different, in fact, in order for you to be free? You don't have to change any of the facts. What you can change is their meaning. What you and I can shift about everything in our past is the meaning we gave it. We were little children, some of us, when these, some of these things happened. And uh, we, 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 we can wish they hadn't happened. But why not change your wish to seeing it differently? A correct perception on everything. What if that were your wish rather than, I wish my mother hadn't done that to me because then I could be okay. I'm God's beloved child, I'm already okay. I'm okay, I'm Sean. I think I said it last week, I'm amazing. I said it Christmas Eve, I'm amazing. <laughs> but I'm amazing, so, so therefore you are amazing in God. We may not behave amazingly. And we, but here's, here, here's the thing, we can interrupt every thought that tries to tell ourselves that we are not amazing. And we can interrupt every thought that tries to tell that we try to tell ourselves that our neighbor is not amazing. 
Now, last night I was having a discussion with David about, about someone who I just have a huge resentment towards. I'm just angry about something I feel they did to me. And they did. But how it affected me was my decision. And that's the hard part to grasp. The way that it affected me, I chose. Because I know other people that this would happen with. And I guess it happened to you. And they would choose a whole different reaction. There are even people who would choose to deal with it in love. I've met a few of those people, but uh, to ch oh, I'm going to I'm going to love this person who just assaulted me. I envy those people who can do it naturally, and it's just the norm for them. However, as I give this talk, of course I have to now work on what I'm thinking about this other friend who I feel assaulted me because it's not paying off the way I'd hoped. My resentment towards them is not paying off. It's not punishing them at all. And it, but it's, it's not doing a lot of good for my insides. It doesn't put a lilt in my step. It's an obstacle that if I turn the light on, I can see it as an opportunity to experience forgiveness once again, the giving way for a new thought about this, a new thought about my brothers and my sisters in the world, not just some, but all. So you see my wish, my wish is that I see everything correctly, meaning everything in love, everything in light, everything in peace, everything in joy, everything. Everything, everyone, all experience. It doesn't mean I won't cry. It doesn't take away my emotions. It doesn't take away any wonderful part of my human experience. What it takes away is my conviction that this is somehow bad. It takes away the darkness. It takes away that which is not real to begin with and lets me see and lets me be. God has no need for us to suffer. That is not a vibrant lesson. Teresa, yes. would you help me here? Would you walk around the room and have everyone take one of these? Sure. <coughs> it's going to be part of our ritual here in a minute because we're going to invoke our good into these tablets you are about to receive. And evoke meaning you're going to speak your wish, your highest wish, into these tablets. Don't eat them. <laughs> it's not, this is not Holy Communion. <laughs> these are not wafers. These are tablets. You're going to invoke. You're going to call forth. Let me read this to you. <coughs> Invocation is the calling forth of the presence of spirit through the power of the word. And Charles Fillmore, this was his prayer. I am now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. I acknowledge thy presence and thy power, O blessed spirit. And thy divine wisdom now erase my mortal limitations, and from thy pure substance of love bring into manifestation my world according to thy perfect law. So imagine that your wish is to love the law, divine law, love the perfection of spirit. Love, love, love. Imagine that your wish is that you would have the courage to surrender your lack. That you would have the courage to surrender your fear. Imagine that your wish were to surrender any false meaning of any event. Imagine that your wish or to do that and knowing that your wish is to do this, your commitment to doing this, is that everything will change. 
It will all change for the good, even if there is a moment of discomfort. Even if there is a moment of everything looking unlike what you wish. Imagine, if you will, your wish is to say, yes, God, I know the abundant divine will for me is good, is peace, is joy, is love, is wisdom, is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of that which is not yet seen. Imagine, if you will, that your wish is to know God better than you've ever known God before, is to know source better than you've ever known source before, is to know life better than you've ever known life before, is to know wisdom and knowledge better than you've ever known wisdom and knowledge before. Imagine that your wish is to be clear and willing to say yes to your good all the time. Imagine that your wish is to actually believe the promises that are offered here because you are assured. Imagine that your wish is to know God even if God doesn't look like you thought God would. Imagine that you, your wish is to know life even if life doesn't look like you thought life would look like. Did Kenneth get one? Did I get one? Uh, imagine. There's no more. No. <laughs> imagine that there is no wish makers left. Did you get one? <laughs> it's going to be a ring on her next week. <laughs> wow. Imagine. Oh, you tripped over that obstacle. <laughs> so let's take a moment silently here. And then invoke your wish into your tablet here. Okay, speak into your tablet. Don't worry that you're wishing the wrong way. You don't just get one wish. This is a ritual. You only need one wish. So what I'm going to do now is go over here and place it to let it fizz up. <laughs> Kenneth, why don't you come over? <laughs> <laughs> why don't you guys come up and place your wishes. Let our wishes join together with one another. With thanks now that you would even consider doing this.
Look how exciting our wishes are. Does anyone need to drink this? <laughs> so I ask you, do you want to be healed? Do you want to welcome the light as yourself and as your only truth? When you say yes to this question without hesitation or exception for anything you seem to see or know or experience, you will be healed and you will know the light fully. Nothing can keep this knowledge from you because this knowledge is what you are. All that can keep the knowledge of your truth from you is your desire not to know it of yourself. To know your truth of yourself, you must also welcome your truth unto all that you see and think and know and believe. You cannot keep the truth from anything and know the completeness of the light. The light must be welcomed fully because the light is everything. Why? What does the light do? Let's you see. Thank you. If you're not welcoming the light, you are choosing to keep it hidden. All that you see and experience is of your choice. So you know what you are choosing by that which you see and experience. Take a breath. Let's give thanks now. We are willing to play that we are willing to rethink, that we are taking this Sunday, today, December 30th, 2018, to reconsider everything we think, everything we say, everything we do, because we are welcoming the light with our one wish. <laughs> 